SBC Media. Welcome to iGaming Daily, analysing the news from the betting and gaming industry all over the globe. Supported by SBC Summit Barcelona, the industry-leading conference bringing you the future of sports betting and iGaming. SBC Summit Barcelona is where you can experience the entire global industry coverage under one roof. Join 10,000 industry professionals for three days of game-changing conversation and education. Get your tickets now at sbcevents.com. It felt like only yesterday when we were in New Jersey for the SBC Summit North America, embracing all things US when it comes to gambling while enjoying the bright lights of New York City for the evening networking events. However, the conference schedule waits for no one, as many from the industry have jumped on a plane to sunny Malta with the Casino Beach Summit currently underway. And I am pleased and slightly envious to be joined by the Casino Beach team live on location at the Intercontinental in Malta. Before we get underway though, everyone knows who you three are, Craig, Connor and Danny. Everyone knows who you are, but for the listeners to know whose voice it is, can you just introduce yourself, please? Hey everyone, I'm Craig Davis. I'm the editor of Casino Beats. Hello, my name's Connor Porter and I am a senior journalist on Casino Beats. And I'm Danny Lee, business journalist for Casino Beats and Slot Beats. Perfect. So, as you said, Casino Beats Summit is currently underway. But first off, you did travel to Malta yesterday, so... How was your flight? Was it smooth? And you also had a pre-registration last night. How was that? The flight was fine. It was a bit bumpy coming out of Manchester. As always. Kind of. Kind of got to the hotel, unpacking all my stuff. Took my belt out of my bag. Realised I'd not brought any pants. So <laughs> no. I had, I had no jeans or pants when I got here. So that was fun. <laughs> so we had a quick, quick run to the shop. So... I was going to say, you're walking around the Intercontinental and just your boxers. Well, no. I had sweatpants that I travelled in and a <laughs> pair of Air Jordan shorts that, uh, <laughs> that I changed into. And if anyone knows our boss, Andy McCarran, it's basketball attire is definitely not appropriate. <laughs> I was going to say, you won't have, got, you won't have passed that one. <laughs> I'm not sure how Air Jordan shorts with a belt on would have gone at a conference. But. <laughs> at least you got the belt for smart casual. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, They do set these rules. <laughs> uh, so after we got over that yeah we had the networking event on the sky lounge at the intercontinental which was 19 floors up so it was lucky that i actually went <laughs> but it was it was it was it was very very busy um every bit of it was happening it's a great venue once you'd had a couple of drinks you forgot how high you were uh, but it was it was it was a great venue and that kind of hustle and bustle of last night has carried into today so far downstairs it's very busy perfect and we'll kind of, we'll get on to downstairs now um so like i said you're at the intercontinental still it's where the event's taking place um the doors opened correct me if i'm wrong, wrong craig it opened at 10 a.m local time 9 a.m for the exhibition and then the panel started at 10 perfect so it opened at 9 a.m panel at 10 a.m so you've had at the time of recording this about two hours worth of panels um have there been anything interesting on, or have there been any interesting panels worth noting about this morning? So my day so far in terms of panels, I caught the very end of a um, employee value proposition panel in conference room two, which is a leadership and affiliation track. Uh, so I caught the very end of that. That had a that had a few decent few decent lines about um, kind of closing the gap between C level and just the rest of the employee base kind of bringing everything together as one. But then we went into the SPC leaders panel, which was really quite interesting. And it's kind of looking at how do you, the, the narrative between the industry, politicians, regulators, players, all these people, how do we address that? Um, and the moderator on the day was Peter Wilson, um, a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So he began by looking at the spate of fines we've seen in the UK. Of course, this isn't a UK scene. We've, yeah. uh, we've seen it in several jurisdictions. And it kind of goes into how clearly something's wrong was a line he used. Um, something's going wrong somewhere. 
there's the rules and regulations in place. Companies are licensed, but we're seeing multi-million pound fine after multi-million pound fine. So how does this change? How do you how how do you stop it happening? What's what's going wrong, and and where? And obviously we went into the the black market issues um, and and all, all that kind of thing. There was a nice little line about do, do we do we need something like a trip advisor for gambling? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that would look or work. And it, it went into all that and the issues. It, trade bodies is 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 there too many of them? Mm-hmm. What what positives does the industry do? Is the industry good enough? in showcasing it, the positive side it brings. What was the response to that from the panellists on the, like, presenting the positive side of things? Were they quite favourable for the industry on the panel? Ish. They kind of th- threw the shade on regulators a little bit again. Yeah, throw the shade to them. With the difficulty of getting anywhere, yeah. really. Mm-hmm. And there was... a. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. It was Colin Stewart, CEO of Palacino Malta. He's mm-hmm. worked 40 years in the industry. He's been in Eastern Europe. And he was given an example from the Czech Republic about uh, legislative changes and regulatory changes since 2017, he was saying. He gave an example of a self-exclusion system, but it's run by the government. Mm-hmm. So obviously the casino properties have to plug into that. But someone could go in with a different ID, a different name, or whatever, into a casino. And if that's not how he's registered on the self-exclusion system, they're not going to know. Okay. Um, so it was that that kind of thing they were saying, the difficulty of getting anywhere with regulators, and you have people kind of running regulators or high up that do they fully understand the industry? And if not, how can they be in a position to regulate it if they're not in discussions with the industry itself? Um, so it was all that kind of thing. Perfect. And moving on with the Connor. Hello. Uh, so one of the panels that I went to this morning was a CTO panel uh, talking about integrating emerging technologies in the online casino business. Um, but before I get into that, there was a keynote just before that panel itself mm-hmm. from Gaming Malta um, and from the Chief Operations Officer of Gaming Malta, uh, Ivan Valetti, who t- talked about uh, iGaming on the island and how it's helped uh, develop the ecosystem and how it's, uh, it's impacted the growth of the island overall as a whole as well. Um, so it was interesting to hear the perspectives uh, since we're in Malta as to how iGaming is having an effect on the island itself um, since we're here at the event on the island. So back to the CTO panel and you know they talked about the challenges that uh, technologies have when it comes to um, integrating them into online casino and some of these challenges uh, can in- include keeping up with the tech itself as it continuously develops you know we've heard we've all heard about AI over the past year or so with uh, you know the the most most known AI at the moment the chat GPT um, mm-hmm. search engine and how that is being used in loads of different um, verticals and spaces so keeping up with those te- kind of technologies, is one thing, uh, but also selling those uh, tech ideas internally as well, so that they can be developed into into products is another. And also um, balancing the uh, the benefit of the of uh, of technology versus just developing the technology because it's a, a pet project of of those that are developing it, uh, making sure that uh, whatever technology is being developed for. Um, the, the online casinos is for the uh, the platform benefit and the uh, the customer benefit as well. Um, so those were interesting points from the beginning of that uh, panel. But for later on, they uh, they also spoke about uh, another significant challenge, which was trying to find the right people and the right roles for uh, technology to, to be developed to be developed. And um, one uh, point that was brought forward by um, the chief technology officer of uh, video slots, David Alamango, he spoke about how his company has had a uh, a, par- a partnership with uh, Stanford University, and um, since technology is more grasped by uh, young people, you know, uh, as uh, we we all know, 
the uh, the direction that the video slots decided to to go in was to to try and hire these young people when they are coming out of university and into these um, into these kind of uh, uh, technology roles, so that they are more up to date with uh, the technology itself and it, it fits into the into the needs of of the company. So it's uh it's interesting to to know the direction that casinos and online casino spaces and all those that are linked to online casino want to take the technology in um because it's definitely around to stay as we all know it's just a, a case of how do we implement these new techno technological ideas and what ideas are implemented into the online casino and i game and space in order to not only benefit the platform but also to to benefit the customer as well yeah, no, I perfectly summed up that. And I, I think it's interesting to hear that they're actually utilising the knowledge of the youth because certainly back, probably when I graduated, there was, when I was looking for a job, it was always about you need experience, you need experience in the, in like, in journalism that we are now. Um, so trying to, have, so hearing that they're actually thinking, actually we need these young, the knowledge of these younger people to help advance us moving forward. That's cool. I did like the, um, the discussion, your, what you talked about with the AI point of things, because chat GPT for me came out of nowhere and it came out of nowhere and it just exploded to this huge thing. And now everyone in the sector is looking at ways of trying to utilize that and incorporate it to benefit the player's experience. So really interesting to hear more on that down the line. I'll watch the panel session when it comes online. Um, but moving over to Danny, can we just, what, what did you what panel did you sit on this morning? SVC's very own Andy McCarran was hosting the user experience panel uh, with some good perspectives from suppliers and operators, as well as uh, some head of user experience at uh, said suppliers. Yeah, so just sort of looking at what ways can these companies, you know, keep players engaged and what is the next advances in uh sort of gamification tools uh, for prioritizing player engagement. And so looking at that, there was quite a good section looking at how VR is obviously becoming more and more popular uh, in terms of gaming and whether it is actually, well, whether companies are actually able to sort of bring uh, the online casino experience uh, through VR. So you mentioned who would want to put on a big headset and the issue that's kind of stem from VR in the online casino world is it's not only the bulkiness of it and the weight of it, which just makes it an unpleasant experience for a long duration of time. It's also the value or the price of these virtual headsets, which mm -hmm. to be honest, even for a comfortable person with a decent wage, it's an excessive amount of money to spend. Was, was that touched on a bit more? Because to me, it seemed like an avenue that a lot of suppliers w weren't comfortable going down. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the general sort of view was that VR and online casino can't really work in any way. And that is a, obviously a very big reason. Uh, expensive equipment, you know, you're not reaching a general audience when you're asking people to pay a lot of money just to play certain games. But there is the idea that maybe it could work better with sort of table games and stuff like that. So if you've got a roulette wheel or you're playing blackjack or something like that, maybe they can integrate some sort of social casino element. So to make it a bit more of a enjoyable experience that you can sort of do with your friends rather than just being sort of sat in a room with a box on your head uh, running <laughs> through slots. Okay. I mean, it could work for those type of table games. I still think the issue arises of practicality of affording these things and mm -hmm. having them on for a long duration of time. I think it's, so I've, I've experienced kind of a VR casino myself and I feel like when I'm in there and I, I did it with my brother, we both had the Oculus Rift. All right. It was cool. It was nice being there. Um, but to do it for such a long period, it, 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 it wasn't sustainable for me. I'll say it that way. And it was the same experience that you could just get from playing a game like Prominence Poker that's on the Xbox and PlayStation and just playing with a headset, just literally a headset, not a virtual headset. 
with your friends. It's the same experience pretty much. Um, but I am interested to see how they develop that and move forward. Um, so that was interesting, Danny. Um, again, I look forward to hearing more about that. Mm-hmm. We are only, like I said, two, two and a half hours into the first day. So you have a bit, you have a busy agenda ahead of you. Um, if we go back to Craig, what else have you got for the rest of the day that's, that you think is worth noting to our listeners? Uh, well, panel write-ups has probably not surprising at all. I will be going into a M&A panel a little mm-hmm. bit later on, uh, two o'clock our t- local time, uh, which should, should be quite interesting given the last few weeks and months. Yeah, the, the Neo Games one stands out to us um, and Aristocrats. Yeah, we've spoken deaf about both. Um, and then, obviously, there's, there's constant rumours across numerous markets. So it'll, do, it'll just be interesting what, what, the panel, what the panel's got to say on that. Mm-hmm. And it's worth noting to the listeners as well, um, if you didn't know this about Craig Davis, he's the master at getting panel write-ups. <laughs> done very quickly and getting them up onto casino beats so if he says they're going to be two o'clock local time by the time you listen to this at least two of the panel write-ups will definitely be on casinobeats.com so go and check them out um connor what's on your agenda for the rest of the day so later today i will be attending the uk focus panel uh mitigating the increased costs of compliance obviously in the uk market um and one of the the big uh panelists that's going to be Uh, Taking part is, of course, uh, the CEO of the UK Gambling Commission, uh, Andrew Rhodes, and I will also be talking to him in a one-on-one interview uh, after that panel as well for our upcoming uh, short documentary about the recent release of the UK Gambling White Paper, uh, focusing more on the online casino, uh, casino and, of course, the new slot limits that have come, that have been proposed, shall we say, uh, for the moment, uh, be getting the thoughts of Andrew Rhodes uh, since the, the UK Gambling Commission will obviously play a big part in how the landscape of the UK gambling industry will be changed moving forward. Perfect. At the start of the podcast, I said I was envious of you for being in Malta. I'm actually really envious of you, Conan, because you get to interview Andrew Rhodes, because I think that's going to be a really fascinating interview and great insight, certainly off the back of the white paper. Um, so looking forward to that and nice little plug-in for that future documentary. Thank you. Yeah, a plug-in for tomorrow as well to, to listen to how that interview went and then to go and watch the documentary later on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And Danny, what's on the agenda today for you, mate? Yep, so obviously earlier on been looking at uh, user experience and this afternoon we'll be looking at something that impacts that quite heavily, which is game mechanics. Um, people from Vacout and uh, 7777 Gaming. And um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Get that up on Casino Beats and some more networking tonight before another busy day tomorrow. Perfect. And you've led us on perfectly for tomorrow. I've just asked you to give me some insight on what your rest of the day is like. You, all three of you will be joining me again tomorrow. Um, so our listeners have that to look forward to for day two of Casino Beats Summit. But just to give them a little teaser of what they can expect tomorrow, can you just provide a little flavor of what your lineup for Thursday looks like? Uh, Craig, we'll start with you. Yeah, certainly. Uh, so my morning will be dominated by panel preparation to moderate my first panel. Hey. The, fir- the first one I've ever done, I should say. No, it's not the first panel of the day. What's the, what's the panel that you're moderating? It's on streaming. A topic close to my heart. Love it. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. <laughs> uh, so we'll be doing that 11, 11 a.m., a uh, 45 minute panel. So I'm not really looking beyond that at the minute. Let's, let's get the moderating done <laughs> and then we'll tackle the rest of the day after that. <laughs> the only bit of advice I can give you is just don't look at the clock. From what I can see, we don't actually have the monitor on the stage counting down. Oh, so that's the benefit. Um, honestly, once you get that introduction out of the way and you start the conversation, it flies by. I'm sure it'll be fine. The first one I moderated, uh, Sophia Pinto, who was running the conference room, she was waving a hand at me for about 10 minutes. I didn't see her and she was waving. She was like three minutes left. And I was still like two questions away from actually finishing. <laughs> So I actually I frantically had to round it up. So you'd be absolutely fine. It's perfect. You, you'll do well. And I'm looking forward to actually watching it once it's up and live. I'm not. Um, and <laughs> to be honest, I think tomorrow's podcast might just be me and you talking about your experience with moderating. 
<laughs> Perfect. So, um, Connor, give me a flavor. Give me a taste of Thursday. So tomorrow I will be attending a Italian Italian focused panel. Okay. Obviously, this is a, a market that's gone through a lot in uh, in recent years. A lot of uh, M and A activity. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, the the gambling ad bans as well uh, has seen a lot of investment flow into to land based operations. You know, it'll be interesting to see what the uh, the, the the panelists believe is the direction of the Italian market moving forward, and uh, if this is a, a one that can potentially rival uh, Spain in in terms of uh, an entry into uh, the Latin American market uh, moving forward, just to give you a taste of a uh, of that panel there very interesting taste oh, that's good that one danny yes yeah, so uh, we've got a crypto uh, versus fiat panel going on tomorrow morning um, which will be interesting to see as obviously cryptocurrency becomes bigger and bigger in the casino space uh crash games as well also very interesting to hear about the development of that and its evolution uh, and also be speaking to some streamers about the impacts of the white paper because obviously there are lots of things there to touch on. Perfect. That streamer, I believe, is Chipmunk Slots, mm-hmm. who I, I do not know the time, but I know that he's streaming live at the event. Um, so again, for listeners, if you want to go watch that, I'll put the links in the description below. Um, and on the Crash Game one, Danny, I, I'm very interested to see or to hear people's opinions on actually if Crash Games are now a staple in the online casino genres like your blackjacks, like your slot machines. Is it, is it here to stay or is it just another passive kind of fade? Yeah. So that'd be interesting. Um, and again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you on that one. Um, and that is all we actually have time for today. I am aware how busy you are. Um, tomorrow, uh, we've got the Game Developer Awards. Uh, that's tomorrow evening, I believe. So it would be nice if we have time in the podcast tomorrow just to go over a few of the big categories and see who are shortlisted and just kind of give our opinion on who we think might win. We have no idea who the winners are. Um, so it's just going to be on our own judgment, our own opinion. So it'd be good to go through that at some point tomorrow in the podcast. And... I will let you go. You are ins- you're insanely busy, busy bees. So thank you for joining us today. Craig, Connor, Danny, enjoy the rest of Casino Beats Mall today one. And I'll see you tomorrow. And the same for our listeners. Thank you. And I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to today's episode of iGaming Daily, brought to you in conjunction with SBC Summit Barcelona, being held at the FIRA Barcelona Montjuic on the 19th to the 21st of September. If you want to find out more about some of the subjects raised today, feel free to explore any of the sites in the SBC News Network or check out the latest edition of the SBC Leaders magazine. Happy reading.